women are working two and three jobs, not just because Caribbean women are resilient, but because Caribbean women have children to raise. And very often the responsibility falls on them. International Women's Day actually began more than 100 years ago, and it was led by women workers. And for me, that is so, so powerful. Working class women organizing around issues that affect them. And as the Bankers Association knows, there are strong bankers unions. You know, uh, many women in the women's movement have also been stewards in the union movement for the Bank and General Workers Union and so on. And so it's actually, they are actually walking in the tradition of women workers helping to organize around labor issues, around economic justice, around um, and, and the intersection of labor issues with women's rights. We have an idea that change has happened. So we'll, we'll use a phrase like, well, you know, things changed, but things don't change. People change things. So all the rights that we have all the legislation that has been passed, somebody advocated for that, fought for it for years, secured it, made sure that people knew their rights and could have those rights defended. And so International Women's Day is to commemorate that history of women making change. The financial sector is not letting go of people the way that other sectors in the economy are. But I'm going to have this conversation anyway, because all of us are living together in a society. In the economy, women predominated in the lowest paid occupation. So prior to 2016, in jobs that earn $3,000 or less a month and $5,000 or less a month, women predominated. In the course of the pandemic, we know that there, first of all, over the last four years, we know that there has been significant job loss. We know industries have closed. We know that the economy has contracted. But we also know in the context of the pandemic that, for example, daycares have been closed for a year so that all the women who were working in daycares have been out of a job. We know that women in the retail sector, women selling food, women in clothing stores that may have closed down, women in shops, for example, in Trincity Mall near me, many stores have closed. Those were all jobs in which women were predominantly working, jobs that are gone, jobs that will likely not come back anytime soon because the economy is not bouncing back in the way it was. So what we know is that the pandemic, and although our national health response was obviously excellent in the sense that we are pretty safe in Trinidad and Tobago right now, it has had huge economic effects that we must take very seriously because all of those families that were barely making ends meet before are probably not making ends meet now. So it's very likely that personal indebtedness has increased. It's very likelihood that there is greater family scarcity and therefore mental distress. In terms of women's lives, we also know just from small studies that we have done at the IGDS, small qualitative studies, that women have not only experienced higher unemployment, but they have also been assigned greater care work in the home. That is, they have had to take responsibility for looking after the children who have not been in school for a year, and that that has had implications for their capacity to go out and earn a livelihood as well. First, I would advise that we be real with ourselves about these demands and challenges that women are facing and not expect them to be able to handle it well. These are complex conditions created by a global pandemic as well as by state policy decisions. And those policy decisions would have had direct implications for many women's lives, including their ability to earn a livelihood. And so 
you know, I want to say that while we we like to say to women, listen, as an individual, you can cope much better, you can do this, you can do that. We always, and in my own work, we always want to hold the policy level accountable for whether or not it has anticipated and thought about the effects that it could have on some of the poorest families in our society, but definitely amongst women who still have the greater responsibility for care. Thank you.